If you are one of the 90% of the people in the United States who consumes caffeine on a normal basis, this video is honestly probably for you. Today, I'm breaking down a clinical trial studying how regular caffeine use affects your sleep. It was done in Switzerland by Dr. Janine Weibel and others and published in August 2021. As I said before, 90% of people in the United States consume at least one form of caffeine, like coffee, energy drinks, pre-workout, or straight caffeine pills. But most of the people, like I took this, take it in the morning or afternoon, but rarely in the evening before bed, right? Caffeine makes it pretty difficult to go to sleep, specifically because caffeine has been found to induce reductions of slow wave sleep, meaning your brain effectively becomes faster or, or becomes active and moves faster. But how does, caffeine taking, how does taking caffeine in the morning or during the day affect your sleep later on? That's exactly what the study looks at, so let's break it down. So breaking down the study design, 20 males between the ages of 1835, who were defined as regular caffeine users who used 300 to 600 milligrams of caffeine a day, were included in this study. They were required to have normal sleep as tested by a bunch of questionnaires and tests, and women were specifically not included because there could be some influence on sleep by a menstrual cycle like period and possible oral birth control. And they really wanted to isolate caffeine's effects on sleep specifically, increasing the validity of the study. The study occurred over 11 days and there were three separate study groups. There was a placebo control group that took three placebos a day. A caffeine group, group took three 150 milligrams of caffeine per day for a total of 450 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is a lot. Um, the withdrawal group took three 150 milligrams of caffeine a day for eight days and then three days of placebo. This group is key because it looks at how acute withdrawal affects cap sleep. So if you stop taking caffeine, what happens the next day or the day after? The groups took their study pill at 45 minutes after they woke up, four hours and eight, eight hours. So pretty spread throughout the day. Over the first nine days, they had a normal sleep schedule from around 11.30 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. for around eight hours of sleep. But over the last two nights, the the researchers completely shifted the schedule. The subjects took a nap at around 11 p.m. to simulate the start of sleep and woke up the subjects. They had three different saliva tests done, split up between two hours to verify how much caffeine was in the mouth. Um, you can see here that the withdrawal group had effectively the same amount as placebo. This means that probably no caffeine could have affected sleep and that tells you how long caffeine remains in the mouth at a time you would have been normally asleep. They then pushed the normal sleep time by an average of five hours so they could really analyze sleep waves. So you went to bed at around 4.30 a.m. instead of the typical 11.30 p.m. Um, supposedly REM sleep promotion via circadian rhythms peaks around this time, so they wanted to get the best data possible with this study method. They used EEGs while you were asleep to look at various measures of sleep, like the total amount of time you slept and the length of different stages of sleep, like the N1, N2, N3, sometimes N4, and REM sleep specifically. Additionally, a subjective sleep survey, the LSEQ test, leads sleep evaluation questionnaire, was given to the subjects after they woke up, and this was used to measure subjective sleep quality. This was also a double-blinded crossover study, which significantly reduces bias. Double-blind means that both researchers, or the subjects and the subjects, didn't know who was taking caffeine or placebo. Therefore, neither of them could have even subconsciously acted to bias the results. Crossover means that the study was done consecutively three times in a row with 10 days apart, so like 11 days, then 10 days, 11 days, then 10 days, and so on. And each person was in all three groups at one point throughout the study. So someone in the placebo group was in the withdrawal group and then the caffeine group three iteration, or in the next iteration. This ensures that the order doesn't matter and it generates more data points, which increases your statistical power for the study. So when looking at the results and identifying what was actually statistically significant between different groups, the only statistically significant result was that RL value. The time from lights off to the beginning of REM sleep was significant. So it took significantly longer for the caffeine group to start REM sleep as compared to the placebo and withdrawal group. The total sleep time wasn't significant, total sleep efficiency wasn't significant, the time of actually being in REM sleep versus the N1, N2, N3, that was not significant. And the time to start sleep versus the time you got to bed was not significant as well. That RL value was the only significant value. Additionally, when looking at the sleep quality survey, the LSEQ test, people in the caffeine group said they had more difficulty waking up and felt more tired when, when they were awake in the morning compared to the two other groups. Interestingly, 
acute withdrawal had seemingly no effect on these sleep measures compared to placebo. So if you stop taking caffeine over the next one to two days, you'll go back to normal in the way um, your REM sleep functions, the time to REM sleep functions. Asking the important question now, why does this matter? Why do you need to know this? Well, if you normally consume caffeine and you're a guy, this could apply to you. The caffeine group saw a delay in the start of their first REM cycle, and the caffeine group was more tired when they woke up and had more difficulty waking up relative to the controls. Consuming normal caffeine could make you more tired the next day, even if you don't take it at night. So if you're taking it in the morning or during the day, it can still have an effect. The study didn't focus on caffeine usage earlier versus later in the day, but rather looked at both as a whole. So maybe consuming caffeine solely in the morning could reduce this effect of delaying REM sleep. Studies in the past have done these similar tests with caffeine, but this is the first to use subjects that have normal caffeine use. So this shows how a chronic, chronic regular use can affect sleep. This is also the first study to utilize an LSEQ subjective survey test. Um, so subjects can rate their sleep quality. So we were able to get that data. It's important to note that sample size here was only 20. So you can't make any crazy definitive conclusions um, that apply to every single person in the entire world. Rather, this data gives us an insight into what caffeine could be doing in our sleep, which is simply important to know about physiology and how, how the brain works, really. But that's really all I had for you guys today. Thanks for listening. Um, my description has the full paper linked with some other references that you can take a look at if you're more interested. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you have any um, interesting clinical trials or topics you might have come across. Feel free to throw it down there, and I might review it. Um, I hope you all learned something new today and have a good one. Thanks.